Welcome back to day 28 of the 100 Horror Films in 31 Days. Got in four films and I crossed over the 100 mark with three days to spare. Uh, I slowed up quite a bit, but I made it. Uh, so I made it to 102 films today. I watched three films streaming. Uh, first up was 1989's Dr. Caligari, directed by a guy named Steven Sedayan and starring a lady named Raynal. Uh, Steven Sedayan apparently went on, he was mainly more of a production designer than a director. He, had, he does have a few credits, but they're all uh, low budget type films. This is a bizarre interpretation or reboot or maybe even a sequel, I don't know, of the 1920 classic, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. It, it basically, I think this film is basically a porno film that doesn't realize it's a porno film. There's no hardcore sex in it. Uh, it's just a series of what I think the director was hoping to come across with as an avant-garde type esoteric film. Uh, the movie really gets bogged down by Raynal. She's a terrible actress. I think she only had one other credit to her name and then disappeared. She's the, the, All the acting is flat and bad in this. Um, she plays this scientist who I guess is a... Uh, she is the do she's like a relative of doc the original Dr. Caligari and she's performing these experiments in this really paper mache type settings it's just it's just a ludicrous attempt to be Andy Warhol where there was no art or Andy Warhol to be had I mean it was just a bad movie horrible uh, painful watch I give it a I, mean, I don't know, should I give it a I mean I gave it a three out of ten but the more I think about it it's so bad and so ineptly done that Maybe I just give it a 1 out of 10. It's just terrible. Avoid it at all costs. I mean, apparently the film's become some kind of a cult classic. Uh, I don't see it. It's just a piece of shit as far as I'm concerned. Amateur Hour. Um, next up, I watched Maximum Overdrive, the Stephen King-directed film from 86, I believe. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is really based on a, his like a short story that he did. Uh, I'm not about equipment, mainly trucks, Mack trucks that are possessed, possessed by some alien force and they chase around Emilio Estevez and a few others. It's, uh, it's, it's really kind of a bad movie as well. The, the soundtrack was done all by ACDC, which I think is really its only redeeming feature. Uh, there's some just some really other than the action sequences which are okay there's there's all this interspersed scenes where they try to attempt to have a love story between Emilio Estevez and the lead um, not good it's just I, I watched the Joe Bob Briggs uh, version of it which I thought kind of helped because you at least had some fun with Joe Bob Briggs but there's long spells in this film but really nothing's going on I mean, once you've seen a couple of Mack trucks get blown up, I mean, it just kind of runs out of ideas pretty quick. Um, so I give this a 5 out of 10. Next up is Frankenstein Island. This was the, this was the day for shitty movies. <laughs> Frankenstein Island, directed by Jerry Warren, 1981. Now, Jerry Warren is kind of like another Ed Wood type director. Uh, he's done a bunch of schlocky, really tough movies to sit through. And he went away for a long time in the 70s and then came back. This was like his comeback feature film. Uh, these these people in a parish, these people in a hot air balloon get dropped off on an island that's run by the daughter of Dr. Frankenstein. She calls herself Van Helsing. Uh, it's just a ludicrous plot. You got Cameron Mitchell in this, and he's and he's drunk the whole time. In fact, most of the movie he's like laying on a gurney. He looks like he's just drunk and trying to go to sleep. And you've got and you've got actors and people kind of standing around him or holding his arm up like this. I mean, he's he just looks like he's about ready to pass out from having drank too much. You also have John Carradine, who kind of does these face voiceovers. I guess it, it you know, just 
it's just it's really ludicrous there is a frankenstein monster actually and i was beginning to wonder as i got to the end of this thing if there even was a frankenstein monster in this thing but there there is and he kind of he kind of at the end there's this huge um fight for the lack of a better term with some inept kung fu and frankenstein monster is kind of going around mimicking Bela Lugosi from Frankenstein meets the Wolfman it's hilarious uh, if you watch it on YouTube you can watch it on YouTube or if you really try to watch it I would suggest kind of speeding it up from normal mode just to get through it it's it is a tough boring watch I mean you've got a lot of um, scenes of this group just kind of prowling around on what's supposed to be an island uh, you know, it's just it's just bare bo bare bones, rock bottom production values. But it's a Jerry Warren film, so you kind of got to know what you're getting into when you when you look at any kind of Jerry Warren film. And then finally, 1981's Madhouse, which is a, a Mondo Avadio Sario, the Egyptian producer who did <coughs> Piranha 2, Beyond the Door 3, a uh, number of films like that. This is a slasher film that was filmed in Savannah, Georgia, of all places, uh, starring a cast of people that I've never heard of. Uh, it, it's, it, it's essentially this, it's kind of a Cain and Abel story, basically two sisters. One is disfigured, the other is really pretty. Uh, of course, the disfigured one hates the, hates the one that's pretty. Uh, and then you've, got a, then you've got a preacher or a priest that kind of is, watches over these two with uh, some questionable intentions uh, a number of kills and you've got a you've got a rottweiler that's the menacing rottweiler that attacks attacks a number of people and of course the dog attacks it's a it's a fake dog head there's a number of scenes with the fake dog head in fact the, the best scene is when you've got like a person fighting the dog the mannequin dog and they're stabbing the head of it through a door it's hilarious uh, it's actually a decent watch. It's a fun watch. I give it a 6 out of 10. I'm shocked that, uh, pleasantly surprised, Arrow would take a take a stab at this. This is a 2K restoration. Um, and it's got an audio commentary by the Hysteria Lives. I'm sure they'll be land blasting it. I haven't checked any of those out. Interviews, things like that. It's uh, Riz Ortoloni. Did the soundtrack on this so it, it's an it's an italian uh slasher film filmed in georgia so yeah pretty pretty decent watch it's not one i would go back to it's a blu-ray dvd it's not one that i would uh go back to quite a bit but I, for the first watch i thought it was good and of course you've got the obligatory booklet so yeah that puts me at 102 films uh, I'll probably I'm going to continue on and watch all, all the way through the 31st. There's a there's probably going to be a week gap. I got some traveling to do. I'm going to watch some more films while I'm traveling, but I doubt I'll be able to film and record uh, the final three days of watching. But I am going to do that. It'll be it'll be the first week in November when I do the final three days recording. So. Uh, but yeah, I'm at 102 films today and 50, like 55 first time watches, a half. Uh, that's still shocking to me. Uh, 74 of the watches were Blu-rays. I watched like 16 streaming films and then I, of course I saw Halloween 2018 in the theater as well uh, and about six or seven DVDs. So that kind of gives you an idea really a context of my collection as well because it's pretty much 80 percent blu-rays now all right appreciate you watching and uh let me know your thoughts on these films i watched today thanks